that video. If you did, please share with a friend or subscribe to our channel so that we can make more fun dance videos. Bye! For me, you good. You hold my future. You're working all the time. You're the mountain mover. From sunrise to sunset, till the sun comes back up again. You're by my side. You started a good work in me. I know that you will complete it. You will see.
Hello kids, it's good to be back with another story from the Bible. Our topic today will be on loyalty. Do you know what that means? Well, it means remaining true to people who need you even when things are tough. There are many people in the Bible who showed loyalty to friends and their country, just like David, Nehemiah, Daniel, and so on. However, today's story begins with a man called Elimelech. Elimelech and his wife Naomi lived in the city of Bethlehem in the land of Judah. They had two sons, Malon and Kilian. This family liked living in Bethlehem because all their friends and relatives lived there too. Elimelech's family and friends all worshipped God. Once a bad thing happened in Bethlehem, rain stopped coming and crops stopped growing. Soon there was not enough food for everyone to eat. Elimelech and Naomi decided to take their two sons and move to another country. Where did they move to? Well, let's find out. Through thick and thin, Ruth, an example of loyalty. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness for loyalty gentleness self-control galatians chapter 5 verse 22 my identity i am fearfully made i am wonderfully made i know my identity i am a child of god i'm creative and full of ideas i am not a slave to fear i am bold I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a soldier in the Lord's army. Hello children, today we will be looking at loyalty, our readiness to stick to Jesus and other important things through thick and thin, and it's important as children of God. Loyalty is the feeling of devotion or faithfulness we have towards Jesus, our family members, friends, country, or a cause in which we believe, even when it seems we have nothing to gain from our faithfulness. Let's play a game. Loyalty or not? You told your friend a big secret. He promised he wouldn't tell. But then he told everyone. Your favorite team had not won any competition in a long time. You decided to leave the team. Your cousin didn't attend your last birthday, but that won't stop you from attending his next birthday. Dad and mom won't buy the favorite game or toy you have longed for all this while, yet you love them. The story of Ruth shows what true loyalty is. In a place called Moab, there lived a nice family. Elimelech, his wife, Naomi, and their two sons moved there because there was more food in Moab than in Israel where they used to live. After a while, Elimelech died, but Naomi wasn't alone. She still had two sons, Malon and Kilion. Her sons got married, but about 10 years after, they died too. At least, Naomi still had her son's wives to keep her company. Their names were Orpah and Ruth. Naomi called her son's wives and told them, I'm going back to where I used to live. And I would like you to also go back to your family where you used to live. May God show you kindness as you have showed me. All the women cried and hugged each other because they were such good friends. Orpa didn't want to leave Naomi, but Naomi told her not to worry. She would be fine. So Orpa left to go back to her family. But no matter what Naomi said to Ruth, Ruth would not leave. Don't ask me to leave. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your friends will be my friends and your God will be my God. 
So Ruth and Naomi returned to Bethlehem in Israel together. It was a good thing Ruth went with Naomi because Bethlehem was very far away. And Naomi couldn't have traveled all that way by herself. Notice that Ruth never complained and she wasn't expecting anything in return. She just wanted help. When they got there, Ruth decided that she should do some kind of work. It was harvest time, so she worked in the fields following behind the harvesters and picked up any barley that they had dropped. The owner of the field came to greet the harvesters and noticed Ruth in the field. He asked one of the harvesters who she was. She came back from Moab with Naomi. That's all I know. Lucky for Ruth, the owner of the field was Boaz. He was a kind man who believed in God and a relative of Elimelech, Naomi's husband that died. Boaz went to go talk to Ruth. He said to her, don't go work in any other fields, but stay here with the other servant girls. I will make sure you are safe. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars. When Ruth heard this, she bowed down to Boaz and asked, why are you being so nice to me? I'm not even from here. Boaz replied, I know what you've done for Naomi. You left your family and moved to a place you've never been. May the Lord reward you for your kindness. At mealtime, Boaz called to her, come over here and help yourself to some food. You can dip your bread in the sour wine. So she sat down with his harvesters and Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat. She ate all she wanted and still had some left over. When Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men, let her gather grain right among the sheaves without stopping her, and pull out some heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her. Let her pick them up and don't give her a hard time. So Ruth gathered barley there all day, and when she beat out the grain that evening, it filled an entire basket. She carried it back into town and it showed it to her mother-in-law. Ruth also gave her the roasted grain that was left over from her meal. One day, Naomi had a good idea. Boaz has been so kind to you, Ruth. I think he would be a good husband. You do not know the customs of our country, so I would be happy to tell you what to do if you would like me to. Ruth did want to marry Boaz. He was older than her, but he was a kind man, and she wanted Naomi to help her. Naomi told Ruth to go to the fields where all of the barley was being harvested. Boaz would be sleeping near the grain to guard it. Ruth was to quietly watch until she saw Boaz go to sleep for the night. After he was asleep, Ruth was to go and lay down at Boaz's feet. Don't worry, Ruth, said Naomi. In our country, that is a way for a woman to tell a man that she wants to marry him. Boaz will understand and he will tell you what to do. Ruth did as Naomi told her. That night, when Boaz was asleep, she lay down near his feet. At midnight, something woke Boaz up from his sleep. He looked down and saw Ruth. Boaz was very happy that Ruth wanted to marry him. I would like to marry you too, Ruth, said Boaz, but first we must follow the custom of my country. I am Naomi's relative, so I can marry you. I will have to buy back all of the lands that Naomi's husband used to own. There is one other relative who's closer to Naomi. If he chooses to buy back the lands and marry you, then he has the first choice. 
I must go to him and ask him. That is the law and custom of our country. The very next day, Boaz went to the city gates to speak to the other relative. He said that he wanted to buy back all of Naomi's husband's lands. That would mean that he would be called the kinsman redeemer. This would cost a lot of money. The other relative thought very carefully. He did not want to buy all of the lands. He did not want to marry Ruth either. Boaz, I will give up my right to be the kinsman redeemer. I will follow our custom and give you my sandal. Then everyone will know that I am letting you be the kinsman redeemer. You can buy Naomi's lands and you can marry Ruth. Boaz was very happy. He bought back all of Naomi's lands and told her that he would always take care of her and Ruth. Boaz married Ruth. Later, Ruth had a baby boy. She and Boaz called him Obed. Naomi loved Obed and helped take care of him. Now Ruth and Naomi's family was different. Now there was a father and mother, a baby and a grandmother. God still loved them and took care of them. What have we learned from this story? Ruth exhibited respect, love, friendship and humility, just as Ruth chose loyalty to Naomi and to Naomi's God. So should we choose loyalty to God and to God's people over any commitment to the world? Yes. God is also ever faithful to reward our faithfulness and bless us just like he rewarded Ruth with a happy family. For true believers, loyalty is shown in our commitment to Jesus and his gospel. You can find this in Mark chapter 8 verse 35 and Romans chapter 1 verse 16. It is believing that Jesus Christ is the only source of authority and salvation. So how can the Holy Spirit help you to show faithfulness? When you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and accept him as the only one who can save you from doing wrong things and going to hell, you will receive the Holy Spirit. He's your helper. He will help you to be a loyal follower of Jesus Christ, a loyal friend, and a loyal son and daughter to your parents. Would you like to receive Jesus as your friend who will save you from living a life of disloyalty or in faithfulness to God? Say this prayer. Lord God, I am sorry for doing all the wrong things that I have been doing. I know that Jesus is your son and you have sent him to save us from going to hell. I receive him and I believe in him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's take our memory verse. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 3 to 4. Amen. God's story, Ruth. So part of God's story is about a woman named Ruth, and it begins like this. Ruth lived in a place called Moab and was married to a guy who was part of God's special family, the Israelites. A few years later though, Ruth's husband died. Instead of returning to her family, which would have been expected, she stayed with Naomi her husband's mom. Naomi tried to get Ruth to go back to her family in Moab, but Ruth wouldn't leave Naomi, no matter what. In fact, she wanted to go back to Israel with her. Ruth said, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. So they both returned to Naomi's home in Bethlehem. 
Back then, though, it was hard for women to find work. Usually, they had to be taken care of by their husband or a dad. It's really hard to imagine that now, but Naomi and Ruth might not have even known how they'd survive. At first, to get food, Ruth went to the fields of a man named Boaz and followed his harvesters around. If they dropped anything, even just a piece of grain, she picked it up. This was called gleaning. Ruth worked from morning to night and barely even took a break. Boaz noticed. He told his workers to leave behind some extra grain for her to gather. When Naomi heard about this, she was overjoyed because Boaz was Naomi's relative and what's called a family redeemer. That meant that it was his responsibility to take care of his family. If anybody was going to rescue Ruth and Naomi, it was Boaz. Kids, we have a redeemer too. It's Jesus. He's the one who saves us. Anyway, this gave Naomi an idea. She told Ruth to put on her best clothes and perfume and then go to the place where Boaz was sleeping. Naomi said that once Boaz had gone to sleep, Ruth should lay down by his feet. Now, this may sound like a weird plan, but it was actually really brave. Ruth trusted Naomi and obeyed. When Boaz woke up, he was surprised. After all, someone was lying at his feet. That's not exactly a normal night. When Boaz asked who Ruth was, she said, I am your servant. You are my family redeemer. Now Boaz understood. Ruth wanted Boaz to marry her so that she and Naomi would both be taken care of. Boaz agreed. This was a huge deal. Ruth wasn't an Israelite, but she wanted to follow God anyway. By marrying Boaz, she got to officially be part of God's family. In fact, Ruth's great-grandson was King David. And many, many years later, Jesus, the rescuer, was born into the same family line. Now, because of Jesus, we get to be a part of God's family too. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Ruth was from Moab. Her husband died. Ruth was left with his mom, Naomi. Naomi told her to go home. Ruth said no. She went to Israel with Naomi. They needed someone to take care of them. Ruth gleaned in a field. Boaz noticed. He left extra grain for Ruth. Naomi made a plan. Ruth obeyed it. She wanted to marry Boaz. He agreed. Ruth became part of God's special family. And we can too. And that's a part of God's story. What did you think about Naomi's decision? Why did she remain with Ruth? Perhaps it's because Naomi showed Ruth kindness while she was leaving with her and also wanted to serve God as well. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful sermon and lesson that we have learned about loyalty. Help us and teach us to be loyal to our friends, loyal to our family, and loyal to the people around us in our community. Thank you, Lord. Amen.